for my political panel this afternoon, Liberal MP Jason Falinski and in a moment Labor MP Peter Khalil join me. Uh, just beginning with you, if I can, Jason, Jared Rennick and Alex Antic are threatening to abstain from voting on the controversial religious discrimination bill until the Prime Minister opposes state vaccination orders. Firstly, I just want to get your take on this behaviour. Is this appropriate from coalition senators? No, it's not, PK. It's not appropriate from anyone who's a member of the Liberal or National Party. Um, you know, uh, frankly, um, and I'm not going to itemise them for you, but everything I vote for in, in, in the Parliament is not something that I necessarily would have done that way or that I would agree to. But the fact is that we live in a democracy, uh, we live in a parliamentary democracy and majority rules. And, um, you know, the view of what is go what happens in the party room is the view that we need to stick with. Now, what's happening here is that, frankly, um, the Prime Minister has been put in an impossible position. He has no um, influence, or he might have influence, but he has no capacity to tell the states what to do over vaccinations and whether they're mandatory or not. And I just don't think what's happening here is either fair to him, fair to the Liberal or National Party, and it's certainly not fair to the Parliament and the Australian people. Is it fair, though, that your government government prioritised this bill in the first place. Which bill would that be? Pauline um, Hanson. Oh, the Pauline Hanson bill. Well, I, you know, the Senate, for those of us in the House of Reps, um, what goes on in the Senate can be sometimes very mysterious. Mm -hmm. um, but my understanding is that this was a matter of where there are always these negotiations with the crossbench and they get to, um, to a certain extent, they have lassitude about what bills they put up. So this wasn't actually a matter of the Liberal Party or the government prioritising the bill. It was a matter of that in order for the Senate to function, there are these arrangements in place where crossbench parties, um, both the Greens and, and One Nation and others, can put bills forward that they deem to be um, priorities for themselves. Peter Khalil, do you, does that stack up to you? No mystery here, Patricia. No mystery, Jason. Uh, the government. No, no, uh, Peter, actually... quite the opposite. The Senate is one giant mystery for those of us All in right. the House of Reps. Let Peter have a, have a talk, yeah? Well, you know what, if you're going to interrupt me, Jason, it's a pathetic argument. The government actually allowed this bill to come up for debate. They knocked over the bill that Mc, uh, Senator McMahon was, was uh, so interested in, which was scheduled around the uh, uh, territory issues. Um, and they probably did it, and I'm being cynical here because you've interrupted me, because they're pandering to Pauline Hanson. They're afraid of her threat that she would not vote for any government legislation if she wasn't allowed to put this bill up. And then we saw, what was it, five coalition uh, senators cross the floor and vote with her on this bill. And it took the rest of the government senators and the, and the opposition to oppose it. Um, so, Jason, I suppose the question is, in relation to the substantive issue as well, the government has been now arguing, or well, if you listen to the Prime Minister, that you know, if you should be able to go to a cafe if you're not vaccinated in Brisbane, in your own state where you are, uh, well, you're not there right now, I don't think, but in New South Wales, in Sydney, where you come from, it, you have to be vaccinated to go to cafes or restaurants. Isn't that reasonable? Uh, look, I, I think to a certain point it is. So um, I've got to say, though, that at some point in New South Wales, I think it's December 15, it all becomes a bit silly. Um, you know, when you've got um, vaccination rates around the 92, 93%, um, forcing people, well, saying that businesses can't serve people or have to check whether someone's vaccinated or not um, really becomes just a bit, um, I, I don't know, just, I mean, someone would have to explain to me the health reasons behind that. I mean, we're in Canberra at the moment, Peter and I, and I mean, I think they have vaccination rates over 98%, and we're all still wearing masks around the building. It, I mean, what, what do you want it to be, 101% before we start relaxing some of these restrictions? OK, but, That's... but all right, Peter, Peter, you want to speak? Well, I don't think... Well, that wasn't the question that you asked, uh, Patricia. But anyway, the point here is not... Uh, the point really is about the fact that uh, these measures have actually led to uh, the high vaccination rates that, that uh, Jason is celebrating. So they were part of the reason why we have such high vaccination rates. Um, we, it's about following the medical advice. And the fact is the Prime Minister is selective when it comes to being critical. Uh, the very same rules that are in New South Wales are unmentioned 
unmentioned by the Prime Minister, yet he picks on, and it's very partisan, he picks on Labor uh, premiers and Labor states that have Labor governments in there to be critical of them, and yet New South Wales, not a mention. Yeah, look, Jason, I've been watching this very closely and it is the case that it is actually New South Wales that began these mandates really before anyone uh, on teachers, then on these venues. Uh, it's actually a coalition state that was imposing these mandates for participation in society. So why is it just the Labor states that are getting handpicked for criticism? Sorry, PK, do you mean um, mandates in terms of people had to be vaccinated to go into the venue or that people had to be vaccinated to continue to work at that venue? Uh, both. Both, because um, okay, we've seen well, was... both of that happen. And also, like, I'm thinking about the teacher mandate that all teachers are to be vaccinated. That happened first in New South Wales, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, that at work in aged care, because your government keeps saying, well, we support it for aged care. But clearly, uh, in schools, it's happening in Victoria and, and, and New South Wales in both states. Yeah, so I think the difference is between New South Wales and Queensland is that in Queensland, baristas are being... Um, forced to get vaccinated or else they can't work. That's not the case in New South Wales, but you are not allowed to go into a restaurant or a bar or a cafe um, if you haven't been vaccinated. So I assume that includes people who are... and hairdressers as well. So I assume that includes people who work in those venues. Um, but that is something that will come off December 15. With teachers, um, I'm not sure in New South Wales that that's something that comes off. And let me be clear, I understand vaccinate, vaccine mandates for workers in aged care. I certainly understand it for frontline healthcare workers, um, but uh, so a broader um, mandate across um, all sorts of other different sectors where it's not necessary um, seems to me a bit, um, well, a bit intrusive. Uh, what do you think, Peter? Is it intrusive? Well, I think with all of these rules, the inconsistency of the rules is one big problem. And, and I think part of the broader point here is the breakdown in our federal system in many respects. The lack of national leadership, particularly by the <coughs> Prime Minister, um, the abrogation of responsibility to state premiers and chief ministers, the lack of consistency ac across all of the states and territories, the breakdown in national cabinet. The, he has overseen uh, really the, the diminishment, I think, of our federation. And that, to me, is a really big... Uh, a cross against his uh, record as far as the need for a Prime Minister to be showing national leadership during this period and not uh, mitigating his responsibility to others. And he sometimes takes credit for when the Premiers get it right and when, when things aren't working well, he'll hoe in hard and, and be quite critical and run the political line. So the politicisation of this is something that has disturbed me as well. Um, on the substance of the issues, very quickly, Patricia, um, obviously there, these rules need to come into some sort of consistent framework as we go forward, um, as we are obviously at 90 and 95 per cent vaccination rates. Uh, that is an excellent thing. Uh, we need to see, see a standardisation of these rules across the nation. Do you think there should be a standardisation too, Jason? Because it, it, is, it is confusing, no. like, you don't? <laughs> No. Okay. I mean, the, the whole point of the Federation is that there is public policy experimentation. So, you know, this sort of absolute need that what happens in Sydney must happen in Perth is, is actually not what federations are designed to do. They're designed so that you can experiment with one set of policies in New South Wales. If they work, then maybe you can adopt them across the board. Um, if they don't work, then... Um, so then, you think you know, our, go, our federation is a petri dish? State. That's Sorry? what you think, Jason? You think our federation is an experimental lab? Like, come on, where's the national well, leadership on this? We're not six different countries, OK? I mean, it's pathetic to say that it's an experiment. An experiment. No, it's not. It's supposed to be a, a, a form of governance and functioning. Yes, there are. there is decentralisation within our constitution where, where it actually matters because there are different conditions, obviously, in some states and territories and cities. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about basic... Uh, rules, health, we're talking about the travel that goes on between okay. states and territories. It's very different. All right. Do, so you clearly be allowed disagree to on this? That, Absolutely. Patricia. I'd love you to, yeah. Yeah. So what I would say is that Peter simply is misunderstanding exactly one of the founding principles of liberal oh. democracies, which is that wow. we have limited Talk government that allow people... Uh, just let him in finish. Sorry, in, in states so that you have governance that is closer to the people. That is 
That is the basis of the EU. That is the basis of the United States. That is the basis of Canada. Um, yeah. Federations are fully understood in that form. For him to suggest that um, policy experimentation is not meant to be part of a federation goes against nearly 300 years of understanding yeah, yeah. of how... Thanks for the lecture, work. Jason. I and actually studied me, constitutional right. law right. as and well. I don't know if you me, did, but thanks for the lecture. It interests me... It interests me that Peter and the Labor Party are very happy to talk about we need national leadership on these things, but are quite happy to see state borders closed to other Australians. Okay. So it interests me where, you know, this leadership is meant to begin and end. Um, you know, if there is one thing that should be national, oh, I thought you it supported should be the experiment. that all Australians should be able to travel <laughs> okay. from one part of the country to another. All right, I want to pause on this very uh, animated conversation and have another animated conversation, if we can. <laughs> Starting with you, Peter Khalil. Uh, bit of a weird stoush in the end of question time. The Prime Minister and the Opposition Leader really gave conflicting accounts about an SMS about whether the Prime Minister was going to Hawaii. The Prime Minister has now since clarified, saying um, he didn't actually tell Anthony Albanese the, the, where he was going on holidays. This is, of course, the very controversial holiday to Hawaii. Uh, why does this matter? Why is Labor pursuing this? Because it goes to integrity, uh, Patricia. It goes to trustworthiness. It goes to the fact that this Prime Minister has a glass jaw and lies about things blatantly. Like, he basically said uh, that he... Uh, well, he revealed on 2GB, he sent a text message to Anthony Albanese that he was going on leave. And then he came out in the chamber and said, I told him where I was going. Anthony was like, I didn't release this. I didn't make the text exchange public. You did. And also, you did not tell me where you were going. OK? And he's gone back and forward. I think he went into, back into the chamber twice to actually clarify his statements. And he was huffing and puffing. He was all over the shop because he was actually caught out telling porkies again. This guy cannot be trusted. He can't be trusted with a basic thing like a text exchange with the leader of the opposition where he uses it for political purposes when he's under the pump on a radio interview. That was a private exchange, but he chose to make it public okay. and then lied about it. All right. Well, Jason, it seems like a pretty big own goal from the Prime Minister because now he's talking about the Hawaii trip again uh, and he's also had to clarify that he actually didn't say it was Hawaii. What's going on? Uh, so the Prime Minister was asked in question time whether his office lied about whether he was on holiday or not. He stood up and he said, I didn't lie. Um, I can only speak to what I said, which was that I was on holidays and I texted the leader of the opposition when I was on the plane that I was taking leave with my family to go to Hawaii. The last part of that, which was that he was going to Hawaii, he didn't tell the leader of the opposition. He went back into Parliament and clarified that he did tell him that he was going on holidays, but he didn't tell him where he was going. Honestly, if this is what politics in the 21st century oh. has been reduced to by the Labor Party, Really, no wonder Australians um, really? hold us in such trustworthy low regard. integrity. Trustworthiness is not important. Integrity. Is that what you're saying? Seriously, this is it. Because he he told him he was going on holidays. He missed. Mate, he huffed and puffed. He told him where he was going. I was going. in the chamber. I saw it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I was not in the chamber. Um, <laughs> just clarifying. Lucky, lucky for you. Lucky for you. Lucky for you, Patricia, no, that you weren't I, there. I, I, ha happy <laughs> with that, actually. Pretty happy with that. Just finally to you, Jason Falinski. Uh, are you guaranteed that this religious discrimination legislation is coming to the party room tomorrow? Oh, nothing in politics is guaranteed, PK, but my understanding is that he's coming to the party room tomorrow. Um, I really haven't seen it and I don't know much more about it than that. Would so. you like to? Are you feeling... Oh, like, no, in the, in the proper like course of events. I, look, um, uh, I'm not trying to show off or anything, but I've, I've just been very much focused on the housing affordability um, inquiry that I've, I'm chairing with, um, you know, a whole bunch of other members of parliament, which has been very interesting and very worrying, I have to say. Um, so I haven't had a lot of bandwidth to focus on the religious discrimination bill, which, as I understand, we haven't is seen it. to the party room tomorrow. <laughs> All right, well, let's hope we do see it tomorrow, um, if it's going to be taken to the party room. And people come on this show and show off all the time, Jason, so it's OK. Um, <laughs> all the time. Thank you so much for coming on.
Thanks, PK. Thanks, Patricia. Liberal MP Jason Falinski and Labor MP Peter Khalil there. Well, remember, you can keep up to date at news.abc.net.au and on ABC iView. That's afternoon briefing for today. Remember, you can keep up to date with this show by searching for what we're called in your iView icon. We're called Afternoon Briefing. And